Glory be to God Almighty, I am Brother Hosanna David. Welcome to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. I want to share a message from the Lord. It is a very important message. I couldn't preach on Sunday last week because I was actually waiting for this message. I was traveling on Friday two weeks ago. The Lord spoke to me and told me that this is a message He wants me to deliver. I received part of the message that same Friday and I was waiting for the whole message. I waited throughout last week and then early this morning the Lord gave me the rest part of the message. It is a message to the church specifically about the involvement of many people who say they are Christians in the act of witchcraft. This message is not particularly about those who involve themselves is in witchcraft. But it also involves those who are marine agents who belong to different kinds of kingdoms. So if you do not practice witchcraft, but you are involved in marine kingdoms, activities, which is also uh, a form of witchcraft too, do not think that you are accepted. This message is not actually to condemn anyone, but it is to call as many that hear this message to repentance. Let us pray. God, thank you. It has pleased you that we hear from you again. This is a message you have given to me. I ask, O oh Lord God, that you Help me to de deliver this message to your children. Help us, Lord Jesus, to run this race to the end so that we can all receive the crown of life. It is a very fearful thing to hear the most fearful words from you on the last day. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. We don't want to be among those who we experience everlasting bitterness and regrets. Therefore, Lord, help us open our hearts. Let as many that will hear your word receive your word and repent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Follow us across our social media platforms. Before I continue with this message, I want us to read Revelation chapter 21, 1 following. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. Brethren, the Lord spoke to me and gave me a message to the church. I know there is a new city, a new Jerusalem that is prepared for us, but unfortunately, a lot of people are not going to partake in this heavenly kingdom, this new paradise not because they didn't go to church not because they didn't serve god but because they were involved in witchcraft 
unfortunately a lot of people majority of people get initiated into the kingdoms of darkness especially witchcraft while they were still young but when they grow up they owe themselves the responsibility of deciding whether to continue in the path of darkness or to repent and turn to the Lord so this is a message the Lord gave me I want to read from where I wrote it tell Christians that witchcraft has eaten so deep into humanity remind them that practicing witchcraft is still an abominable act to me even if the whole world embraces witchcraft my standard will not change all witches and wizards including all those who consult sorcerers or practice witchcraft shall have their part in the lake of fire revelation chapter 21 verse 8 i am a holy god my standard will never change hosanna the purpose i gave you this message is to warn them so that they can repent i am a merciful god i am ready to forgive no matter what they have done in the past then he said to me there are only two ways a christian that is possessed with the spirit of witchcraft can enter my kingdom number one if they confess their witchcraft and repent of their evil deeds sincerely sought for deliverance but could not get the witchcraft spirit out if they practice holiness and continue to ask me for mercy and deliverance they must have confessed openly and rejected every evil thing they did in the world of darkness. They must also cease from their wickedness and evil deeds. These are people who genuinely love the Lord and continue to seek deliverance but could not get delivered until they meet with death. No witch or wizard can enter the kingdom of God. The one that owns your spirit here on earth is the one you will commit your spirit into their hand when you are dying. The one you commit your spirit into their hands while you are alive is the one that actually controls everything about your life. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. If you are led by marine spirit or the spirit of witchcraft, you are not a child of God and you cannot rest in the bosom of Abraham when you depart from this world. But for those who are possessed with either the spirit of witchcraft, marine witchcraft, and they genuinely confess to God that, Lord, I am a sinner, and they confess openly and reject all the evils they have done in the past and in the world of darkness, and genuinely seek deliverance i mean genuinely seek deliverance they try the very best they could and sought for deliverance but couldn't get the spirit out of them before they meet with death if they continue to ask the lord for mercy and do not continue to use the power the evil power in them to destroy to initiate other people but fervently seek the lord the lord said he is going to show them mercy then number two witches and wizards who genuinely repent but do not have the opportunity to get delivered these are people who hate their past evil deeds and their witchcraft and are willing to let the spirits go but do not have the opportunity to be delivered before they meet with death these sets of people, these are those, maybe they heard the word of God as you're traveling, somebody preached to them in a public vehicle or in a motor park, and they, re they repent and genuinely repent, receive the Lord, confess their sins and repent. And maybe as they continue in the journey, the vehicle had accident and they died. Even though the spirit was not cast out, so long as they have rejected the evil works of darkness, because they did not have the opportunity to get delivered 
from the spirit of witchcraft. The Lord said they will make heaven. Take for instance the criminal, the former criminal, because he did not die a criminal. The former criminal that died on the cross, that was crucified with Jesus Christ, the one at the right hand side of Jesus Christ. He made heaven. He did not have the opportunity to even get baptized. Even though baptism was a prerequisite for admitting people into the kingdom of God, he did not have the opportunity. So also someone who did not have the opportunity to go for deliverance, for the spirit to be cast out of them, they will make heaven if they die in the state of repentance and in their state of having reconciled with the Lord. Tell the multitudes that they are wasting their time serving me in the open but serve Satan in the dark. Then he said, Why do you turn your back on me, even though you are dancing and praising me? I have already rejected your worship. I hate lying tongues. People who sing my love, but their hearts, but their heart is with the devil. In a vision, I saw a bubble, bubble the one when you put um, soap in water and you produce a bubble. That is the kind of bubble I saw, the one that is produced from uh, soap and water. When you blow it, the bubble comes out. I saw one bubble. Then he said to me, tell them this is how small man is to me. God tries to describe how small man is. And he said, man is like a bubble. A bubble. It is nothing. He said, this is how small man is to him in his act. Some of you who see the multitude of people that are possessed ask if God will really cast all of them into hellfire. You encourage yourselves in your evil deeds, thinking that God's standard will change because of his mercy. Grace. Mercy and justice are part of my standard. I will never change. Hell is already breathing out smoke awaiting you. This is why I plead with you that you call yourself to order and repent. You team up and encourage one another in your evils. But I want to let you know that the punishment in hell fire will be met out to people individually, not collectively. Then he said to me, Tell them that being in hell is like a woman having labor pains without the pains going away. All those who refuse to repent of their witchcraft shall have their separate places in hell fire. This is because they chose darkness instead of light. Some of you know that your pastors are possessed with the spirit of witchcraft. Some of them you have seen in your meeting. In your kingdoms. This has greatly encouraged you to continue to serve God without genuine repentance. Some of you intentionally chose to attend churches that are pastored by ministers that are in the kingdoms of darkness. I see your hearts. These you chose because their prayers do not have the fire and the power that will affect the demons in you. This is how much Satan has deceived you. I see all these things. All those of you who seek comfort in churches that tolerate your wickedness and witchcraft have built your everlasting homes in the lake of fire. I, the Lord, I am a holy God. I will not compromise my standard because of your offerings and tithes. I am waiting for you to repent and be saved. There are lots of people who are encouraged in their evils when they see that the one that is preaching to them is possessed. 
They say, well, if God is using him, why will he not allow me enter heaven? If my pastor is saved, because he says he is saved, why will God not allow me to enter heaven? In fact, let me say something. There are lots of churches today. I know they are not churches. There are many churches today where even the altar itself is a coven. There are many churches. The altar is a coven. People pray to those altars and their prayers answered. There are many churches today that are a cult. Cults. Secret cults. By the time you become a very serious member, or maybe you have some level of problems, they will take you to their inner chambers where they will perform some rituals for you. There are people who deliberately go to those churches. They know that their pastors are possessed. But they go there because they will be encouraged there. And again, as the Lord revealed to me, because even when they pray and shout fire, fire, Holy Ghost, uh, the fire will not destroy the demons in them. Why? Because the fire is not, the fire they are screaming is not genuine. They can't invoke the real fire of God. Because they themselves, they, in fact, many of these people before they pray, they cover the atmosphere with dark clouds so that their prayers will not move far. As a matter of fact, let me tell you what some people do. Before they pray fire, they cover, even individuals do it. Before they pray fire, they cover the atmosphere. And as they are praying fire, fire, praying against demons, praying against witches, praying against uh, evils, uh, evil powers, you hear them praying, they scream, but they have already restricted the prayers. Why? Because they don't want to attract evil people or demonic powers fighting them. So they pray. They pray. But they know that the prayer has no effect. They are afraid of their evil fellow people fighting against them. So, they cover the atmosphere. Or you look at them and you say, Ah, this guy is a prayer warrior. This woman is a prayer warrior. No, they are not prayer warriors. Some of them are in the kingdoms of darkness. They are just doing it to deceive people. Remember what Jesus Christ said to the scribes and Pharisees. They like to stand in the marketplaces, in the corner of the streets, and they pray. Because... They want people to see them, that they are praying, that they have received their rewards. There are also these false prophets and false pastors who pray. They manipulate the atmosphere. They cover the atmosphere. They, don't, they, are actually, they actually shout. Some of them shout Holy Spirit. They shout Holy Ghost. They shout the name of Jesus. But they know themselves that they are not actually calling on Jesus Christ. Before they pray, they tell God, God, we are not actually calling you. You know, we are sinners. You know, we are condemned. So don't even answer us. And they invoke demons and cause the atmosphere to be charged with the powers of darkness. You could get healed, but that doesn't mean that God healed you. It's happening everywhere. You could even enter the compound where the prayers are taking place. And get healed without the man of God laying hands on you. You could, get, you could get healed. You could take your water there. You could uh, take your uh, anointing oil there. And they say prayers over it. Or even without them laying hands on it. It could become items of miracles. How? Because the ground has been dedicated to demons. That the men of God are working with. So when you go there, your prayers could be answered. But that doesn't mean that God has answered your prayer. But there are consequences. If you get healing from 
a demonic prayer ground, there are consequences. Let me just say this too. You could get healed because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Not because a demon interfered, not because a demon was responsible for your healing. But if you are a genuine child of God, you go to a place and you have the fire of the Holy Ghost. You are a born-again child of God and you go to a place ignorantly, you could get healed. Your faith could heal you. Remember the woman with the issue of blood. It wasn't Jesus Christ that healed her. If in fact Jesus did not know that a woman was healed, but he knew that virtue left him. Some amount of power left him. And he said, somebody touch me. There's a particular touch. So what I'm saying is that your faith could heal you. Your faith. But those of you who know that this man of God is not bearing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But you are patronizing him. There are consequences. I know God can use anybody. But there are some things that someone would do. The Spirit of God will depart. A man of God cannot live in adultery or fornication. And the Spirit of God is still in them. Over the years, it is a lie. It doesn't work like that. There could be a period of grace. If God gives you a particular time to repent and you fail to repent, the Holy Spirit will leave you. Because actually, when you commit adultery or fornication, you destroy the temple the Spirit of God works. Those who are possessed, some of them are very selective. The churches they enter. They go to churches where the fire of the Lord is not is absent. So they go there and worship God. Why? Because they know the demons in them cannot go to a Holy Ghost filled church. Because the demons will not be able to enter. And they love the demons. They don't want the demons to depart from them. What shall it profit a man? If you go to church and give offering, and you know that the church you will go into, there is no true power of God. But because you love your demons, you don't want to lose them. You don't want to repent. You go to those churches, and you end up losing your soul. What does it profit you? I'm not condemning you, but you have to come out of your wicked ways. Time is running out. There is no time. Time is running out. As a matter of fact, the Lord told me very plainly that this message is going to attract some level of fact to me. But this is me. I've made up my mind. I can die anytime. It doesn't take anything from me. There's nothing like dying young in Christ. There's nothing like premature death in Christ. Only God chooses when to take life and when to give life. So I'm not afraid. If I am afraid, I will not even deliver this message. I've delivered harsh messages, even the ones that are harsher than these ones. And I'm still alive. I am still alive. I'm not dead yet. My life is in the hands of God. But I beg you that please repent. Repent of your sins. Come out of your witchcraft. A lot of you, you are told that the day you confess, you're going to die. But you will still die, whether you confess or not. You will still die. You won't be here more than 120 years, 150 years. You will die. Some of you who are in marine kingdoms, you have been told that when you die, you will go to the water kingdom. And that you are going to remain there forever. And you have seen some of your colleagues that died going there to leave. Those are demons. Those are demons. Taking the form of your dead colleagues to go and leave there. Satan is the father of deception. Hebrew 9.27 It is appointed unto men to die once. And after that death, one death is judgment. So don't think you will die and go there to live. You won't go there to live. Satan impersonates your dead colleagues. You won't go there to live. Your soul will go straight to the maker. Time is coming that the body and the soul, your spirit, will appear before your maker. You will give account. Repent.
of your sins. Come out of your darkness. Come out of your evil ways. Let's continue with the message. Then I had a vision. I saw multitude of people. I saw many people. All of them were mute. And I looked closely and I saw that they were all pastors. All of them were standing. All of them pastors. Then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, this is a band of robbers that destroy my church and scatter the sheep. I have set up my judgment against them. They have been judged already. My reward is with me to give to every man as his works shall be. Tell the young ministers not to walk in the ways of those who are rebels. Those who are well-known murderers and adulterers. Those who oppose their maker because of earthly gains. Then in a vision I saw a man working in a field. He was clearing grasses from a farm. The grasses were tall. And then I saw a few other people scattered in different places. Different places they were working. And then my attention was drawn to one of them. I saw that he looked very, very tired. Uh, he was working so hard. And he looked really tired. Then the voice that spoke to me said, These are those who are truly laboring for me. They shall walk with me in white. I will take away their shame. I will wipe away their tears forever. Now listen, this is why I will never forgive the false pastors, even when they shall bear for mercy. Can you see how that my faithful servant is? He was referring to the one that was drawn to my attention, the one that was working so hard but was tired. He has worked faithfully since I gave him his portion of work in my vineyard. The reason he is very tired is not just because of the labor on the farm, but because he is under a heavy attack. Those who are attacking him are the same people who claim to be working for me. My heart bleeds with sorrow when I see these things. Those who sincerely work for me spend much of their time fighting against this band of horse ministers in vision. I see all these things. Many of those who come and say, Lord, I will follow you, have not repented from their witchcraft. They scatter my sheep and fight against my true laborers. I see all these things. Never again will there be another world where evil will be practiced. Tell all my faithful servants that my reward is with me. I will repay, says the Lord of hosts, according as every man's work shall be. This is a message the Lord gave to me. Let me just explain a little bit. I have pastored 10 years in a church before I resigned 2021. I served 2020, 11 till 2021, 10 years. And I know what the ministry is. I know exactly. Before I went to pastoral school, I was already preaching. I know what it is. Even in the pastoral school, one day I saw a colleague um, with a chewing stick, chewing stick. So I told him to give me chewing stick. He cut it into two and gave me one half. I chewed this two chewing stick. So minutes later, I started feeling toothache. He poisoned me with the chewing stick poisoned me. I was crying. I climbed upstairs and I called my mom on the phone and I told her I was crying. I mean, I was literally crying. Tears were coming out of my, my, my eyes. I was crying because the pain was too much. Not because I had history of toothache. There was nothing. I didn't have any 
pain in my teeth before then. It started a few minutes and it made me cry. So I called my mom and I told her they have poisoned me. So I was angry. I prayed and prayed and prayed. That same evening, it took a vanish and I never felt it till today. He's a man of God today. He lays hands on people. He preaches to people. One of them, while I had accidents, year 2010, when I had transtibia amputation, I was on the bed, helpless, he bought fruits, came to give to me, he poisoned the fruits, he wanted me dead. The Lord opened my eyes and told me never to consume those fruits. He poisoned them. He's a man of God today. He's preaching. I pity a lot of people, church members, who go before men of God. Some of them are going to covens. Some of them are the heads of their covens. You go to them, they tell you, close your eyes, you close your eyes, lift up your hands, you lift up your eyes, your hands, open your mouth, you open your mouth. They put anything in your mouth. If they had been witch doctors with their priestly regalia, I mean, idol uh, priestly regalia, if they ask you to kneel down for them, would you kneel down? Oh, because they are wearing collar, because they are wearing tie, because they are not putting on black clothes with horns. You can obey everything they tell you. But let me tell you, many of those people who are supposed to be witch doctors um, or these demonic herbalists uh, and sorcerers, people who consult familiar spirits, and have established shrines. Many of those who are supposed to be in those shrines are now pastors. Many of them especially are prophets. I see your face, I prophesy, and you are there. Hey, man of God, prophesy. Man of God, prophesy. Man of God, speak into my life. You see, you will end up in hell with many of these people. I'm not saying that all prophets are bad. I'm not saying that all pastors are evil. There are genuine ministers of God who are laboring in the faith. There are some of them, they see deep secrets. Be wise. Be led by the spirit of discernment. Don't go to hell. Some of you hate the truth. Some of you hate the truth with all passion. So if you see those who tell you the truth, you avoid them. But those who tell you lies, they know that you are a wizard, they know that you are a witch. They don't tell you to repent either directly or indirectly. They don't talk to you. You love them. You sow seeds into their lives. But in this message, the Lord says, He will not change His standard because of your tithes and your offerings. God will never change His standard. Some of you think that, oh, because I'm doing so much, uh, even if I kill, even if I go to covens, even if I uh, belong to the kingdoms of darkness, the Lord will forgive me. God will not forgive, except you repent. There is a place that is awaiting you. And you need to come out of that way. Come out of, the, of that path. Today, there is a band of prophets. In every city, when you look at the top prophets, many of them, I'm not saying all of them, many of them have turned it to a cult, a secret society. <laughs> and they are really powerful. You dare not challenge them. You dare not speak against them. Even if God gives you a message to go and warn them, if you are not careful, you may not get home. They could do anything. They have real power. They are on top of the world. But I tell you the truth. Please don't follow them. In this message, the Lord told me that I should warn young ministers not to follow the ways of these people. It is unfortunate that some of you, when I see young ministers posting the pictures of false prophets, well-known false prophets, who even womanize in the open, 
and they don't have any shame. They have no truth, no biblical truth, no biblical doctrine that points people to Christ. And these are your mentors. If the one you want to be like, the one you call your mentor, is on the wrong path, then you don't need any prophet to tell you that tomorrow you are going to end up like them. It is time to come back to the true Lord. The Lord is calling for repentance. Please change. You may say, oh, will God forgive me if I repent? I've killed, I've, I've committed horrible sins. I've blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Can you still forgive me? I know there are lots of people before you get initiated, they ask you to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And you do. They tell you to do horrible things against God. Please come back. God will forgive you. Don't condemn yourself. A lot of people are just in church. They know where they are heading to. But they don't want to stir up the anger of the devil. Let me tell you, the same devil you love today, you are afraid of, don't want to stir up his anger. The same kingdoms of darkness, you don't want to anger. They will torment you in hell. Demons in hell will torment you. And it is going to be very, very terrible because there will be no turning back. Now, I want to encourage as many who are suffering, as many who are laboring, as many who are genuine, keep it up. Our reward is in heaven. Don't let anybody discourage you. Don't let anybody make you give up. This world is not our own. Those of you who confessed your evil deeds and some people are taking advantage of you and making mockery of you. Let me tell you, many of those who are making mockery of you, they have their own secret sins. No genuine child of God will make mockery of you because you confess your sins. Those who make mockery of you, they have their place in the lake of fire except they repent. This message is not to condemn you, but to call you to repentance. Please give your life to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. God is a loving God. He is a merciful Father. Please come back to Him. Thank you for watching this message. I appreciate as many who have been supporting this ministry. We don't preach money. I don't talk about, uh, I don't preach pro financial prosperity and tell you to sow seed so that uh, God will multiply the money you sold uh, into uh, millions and reverse it back to you. I don't preach others' messages because that's not the true gospel of Jesus Christ. For those of you who have supported this ministry, I sincerely appreciate you. I want to tell you that your reward is in heaven. Even in this world, God has his own packages of blessings for you. Please share this video and also subscribe to this channel. In case you want to reach me for deliverance or for counseling, feel very free. My details are on the screen. God bless you. Bye for now.